At a recent hands-on event, I played around 90 minutes of Redfall, which gave me the first taste of something akin to a Far Cry game made by Stephen King. So a couple weeks ago, I was very lucky and Bethesda invited me down to their studio office in London to check out the game and play it on PC for about an hour and a half in total. Redfall is the latest game from Arcane Austin and we recently went hands-on with it. Yeah, Bethesda invited me to a little event in New York City to check out Redfall for an hour and a half. It's nice that these gaming events are coming back now. Redfall revels in the act of plunging a wooden stake through a vampire's heart. The last event that I went to before the pandemic was January 2020. I think that was a Doom Eternal capture event in London. I was geeking out a lot. And then all the travel and events stopped. And for me personally, there wasn't anything else until January 2023. There's weight in the blow as you knock your foe backwards and slam them into the floor. So it seems that all that stuff is starting to come back now and the world is so much bigger than anything we've ever seen from Arcane. And like in our time with it, I was kind of pleasantly surprised. People are being invited to go to studios and various spaces to check out games early. And if you've tracked my coverage of Arcane, you know this is probably one of, if not the most important hands-on session I've had in a long time with a video game. And it's nice because you get to meet the people that work at the publishers, you get to meet the developers. Killing vampires in Redfall feels good. Chat with them and see what their grand vision for the game is. I think the vampire nests uh, were peak yeah. sort of... I could say, oh, that's our king right there. And the reasons behind some of the gameplay choices that they've made when they were making these games. But we had a chance, like I said, to play an hour and a half of Redfall. Just gives you an extra bit of insight, I think, at times. But the more I played, the more I saw of what I'd expect from the historically ambitious developer. Yeah, cool yeah. kind of, I don't know, felt into interdimensional sort of portal yeah. things that you go in. The island town of Redfall has clever environment design that's engineered to complement your skills. It's a story-driven solo or co-op FPS with RPG mechanics, vampires, vampire bosses, with a lot of Dishonored and Far Cry type gameplay in there. The enemy AI is there to be toyed with, allowing you to bait your foes into traps. And every second room I entered felt staged to tell a story. I am an arcane super fan. It's out on PC and Xbox May 2nd and will be available on Game Pass from day one. In a game all about vampire slaying, it's pretty important that killing your blood-feasting foes feels like an event in and of itself. He's got a raven which you can send out and that scans areas so you can see enemies through walls. He's got a cloak and he's got a sniper which is essentially an aimbot. I was like, is this how it feels to use an aimbot in video games? It's a shooter open world thing uh, from Arcane, which is a bit of a departure from what they are usually known for. Uh, but want to get, uh, so we played a couple hours of it. Forces you to play on the aggressive and get a bit closer to the enemy. And emptying the health bar of the vampire isn't all you need to do here to kill them. You also need to put a stake in their heart or else they're gonna come back to haunt you. In a game all about vampire slaying, it's pretty important that killing your blood feasting foes feels like an event in and of itself. In a game all about vampire slaying, it's pretty important that killing your blood feasting foes feels like an event in and of itself. In a game all about vampire slaying, it's pretty important that killing your blood feasting foes feels like an event in and of itself. In a game all about vampire slaying, it's pretty important that killing your blood feasting foes feels like an event in and of itself. Twenty twenty three is already shaping up to be one of the most majestic years ever for AAA video game abject failure. In fact, it's already setting new precedents. Redfall itself was immediately crowned by many as a definite dead cert for worst game of the year at launch, yet was pushed off that predictive slot only three weeks later by Lord of Ring Gollum. Their words, not mine. A game that was so comprehensively half-assed that they couldn't even spell the title of their actual game correctly in their own official apology about what a shit job they had done with the game. That is next level lack of respect for your customers. That is like sending someone a condolence card and including the word LOL eight times. But you will be hearing more about the hero of Lord of the Rings in a forthcoming video. Today we are here to discuss Redfall, a game that is so nuanced and refined with its application of failure that it will, like Fallout 70 Fuck, The Last of Our Steroids Part 2, and Battlefuck 2040 Fuck, 
rightly earn its place in the great mythical pantheon of bad video games. So what is Redfall? Redfall 76 is a single-player or co-op multi-failure first-person vampire-themed lag-freeze PC crash emulator released on Xbox and capped at 30 FPS, despite the lies claiming it was going to be 60 FPS and also released barely functional and unoptimized on PC. You will most likely need to own a beast of a gaming rig to get this crippled pit pony to run at all let alone properly. And by properly, I mean badly. It probably doesn't run at all on an old PC, so that's some consolation for owners of older PCs, I guess. You dodged a bullet right there. Redfall does at least boast an ingenious new method of integrating the system crashing capacity of the compulsory anti-copyright software, DeNuvo. They cunningly released Redfall in such a sorry and dysfunctional state, you don't even notice that DeNuvo is also wrecking the performance too. It's ingenious when you think about it. It's like burning your house down in order to hide a cigarette burn you made on the carpet. Brilliant. The performance was such suckage that losing 10% of it wouldn't even register on the human consciousness. Redfall is underdeveloped by Arcane Studios Austin and shamelessly published by Bethesda Shitworks. People who constantly tell you that they care about the players, while simultaneously selling them helmets contaminated with toxic mould, allegedly. They are essentially the Union Carbide or Norfolk Southern of the video game world, only operating on a smaller scale. For now. Due to the accelerating avalanche of video game company acquisitions going on these days, and how literally most of the mainstream video game industry is now aligning with one of only a few key battle groups, such as Microsoft, Warner, Embracer Group, Sony, etc., I think a little qualification is required. Arcane Studios Austin is conjoined at the hip with Arcane Studio Leon. Arcane Studios is a wholly owned subsidiary of Zenimax, a corporation which is rightly famous for its greed and no fucks given attitude towards its customers or staff. Bethesda is itself also a wholly owned subsidiary of Zenimax Evil Core. You know Bethesda, right? It's the company that made Fallout 76, the game that this lying prick not only lied about, but later laughed at the customers for buying. Given some of that excitement, impressed you're still here. I will casually and inaccurately universally be referring to Bethesda as just Bethesda, even though technically Bethesda is two different but attached divisions. Bethesda Game Studios, the developer who actually made a good game back in 2014, and Bethesda Softworks, its publishing wing. Just like Arcane Austin and Leon, both parts of Bethesda are essentially conjoined too. Precisely like these two nice girls, actually. See? Two arms, one asshole. You get the drift. Xenomax itself is now owned by Xbox Studios. Ergo, Microsoft. So every single aspect of this game's creation and development is ultimately under the control of Phil Spencer, a guy who everyone seems to love, even though he may well turn out to be as big a bullshitter as Todd Howard and also the visually appealing Sarah Bond, most famous for having me perv on her, blowing bubbles. That is why it is both an absolute imperative and an incredible opportunity that games represent all of us. And her hard-earned reputation as a groundbreaking jazz hand specialist. Now, I don't want to disrespect my muse, Sarah Bond, nor diminish her function or objectify her as a woman, but let's be honest here. Her main impact on the gaming industry thus far has been not being the least bangable woman on stage at an Xbox showcase, saying meaningless vacuous corporate word salads on stage about how Xbox is nice, gamers are nice, things in the future will be nice. Which just makes me suspect that behind closed doors and in the meeting room, she's probably more ruthless than Bobby Kotick and doesn't even need to threaten people with hitmen to get things done. And ultimately, all 
of these malignant corporate entities are owned by Microsoft, a company that was set up by Bill Gates. A dude who wants your operating system to spy on you all the time, runs a foundation that has provided almost a quarter of a billion dollars funding for developing global digital ID, and whose own wife left him because basically he was banging young girls on Epstein Island. Allegedly. Now, colour me mildly sceptical, but if someone were hypothetically going to make a really incredibly shit, low effort balked video game, overcharge the customers, and then not issue refunds, well this bunch, this bunch, definitely have the pedigree. In Redfall you get to choose between being an idiot, who paid full price cash money for this suck burger of a game, or a slightly luckier idiot, who only wasted a few hours of their life by playing it on Xbone Lane Pass. When you actually get the game to run, you also get to choose between one of four unlikable fuckbags. Some emo goth from a broken home, some woke tart with student debt. Whatever he is, he is internet famous, FY fucking I, and he sounds like a fucking wanker. Oh, and last but not least, the Butch Bird. Because no video game would be complete these days without a gender ambiguous non binary lady geezer to make sure those quotas get hit for the ESG accounting that needs to be done by the end of the year. These are the sorts of characters that would have been the butt of all the in game jokes 10 years ago, but now, thanks to modernity, they qualify as the sort of personality profile slash disorder that passes muster as a player character and hero in these dark times. Because the grown-ups have decided in their infinite wisdom that surely everyone craves a player power fantasy which includes some variation of being a whinging, emo, androgynous, communist, activist, student, all combined with subtle notes and undertones of mentally unstable possible sex offender. Setting aside the fact that the emo seems to be modelled on that crackpot woman abuser Ezra Miller, and the non-genderised corporeally challenged butch chick seems to be inspired by Ruby Rose, destroyer of franchises, on her most scowly day. These archetypes are pushing the envelope of borrowed ideas, poorly implemented gameplay styles, progressive politics, and basic lack of imagination. Think Borderlands, but shit. Think Far Cry 6, but shitter. Where instead of getting to pick a player character that you like the most, you have to try and figure out which one you hate the least. I am compelled to state now that I hate all the player characters. Perhaps hate is too strong a word, because I don't care enough to hate. Perhaps there is a sub-hate level of hatred to describe something that you would hate if you could only be fucked enough to care. Perhaps disdain. Perhaps Redfall needs its own set of pejoratives to adequately describe its dreadfulness. The player characters seem like a bunch of whining nonces, their backstories are wank, they are entirely unlikable and it doesn't even have mouse over tips on their abilities. These characters are so unsympathetic that if they'd added Dylan Mulvaney as a player character option, I might have just bought some tuck swimwear and bitten the bullet. I shit you not, if they'd added Joseph Mengele to the list of player characters, they would probably have twice the number of active players they have right now. Which incidentally, would be 202 approximately. Think about that. This game is barely a month out of the gate, and you could fit their global online player base into three double-decker buses, and still have room for a couple of pickpockets. At its core, Redfall singularly achieves one goal with absolute precision. It is a painful £70 lesson in why you should never, ever pre-order a video game. Functionality and fuckery The egregious contract is the sort of protracted, multi-chapter, sick joke that we have become oh so accustomed to these days. But this one is ridiculously convoluted and extensive, even by Bethesda's normally abusive standards. You should all know the drill by now, because it contains all the usual shit. Just to launch the game you have to 
Sign away all your consumer rights and your right to a refund. Sign away your right to sue them for breach of contract. Indemnify them if their software bricks your console or PC. Agree that they have the right to change the contract on a whim and it remains binding. They reserve the right to remotely access your PC to troubleshoot issues. Because obviously, the root cause of this game's litany of woes must have far more to do with the private contents of your hard drives than the simple reason that the game runs like a fucked cat. And just in case you weren't already feeling like you were sufficiently legally banged in the prison wallet, just for that final humiliation, they include a behavioural compliance agreement. To put this into some sort of perspective, if you actually sat down and read all of the contracts carefully and in detail, by the time you clicked on the last of the many agree buttons, your two hour return window on Steam would probably have expired. Think about that. I'm growing increasingly concerned about the converging trifecta of abuses contained in many of these end user license agreements these days. That trifecta being 1. The removal of all your rights and protections, 2. The unfettered access the publisher has to your personal data, user data, communications, and the device you are playing on, and 3. Behavioural compliance agreements. Colour me cynical, but any company that spies on you, dictates behavioural norms and reserves the right to grasp me up to the authorities for not being a good citizen, all sounds rather Orwellian to me. What can I say that I have not said before many times? It should be illegal for an end user license agreement to be so egregious that you frankly need to hire a lawyer in order to sign it with informed consent. Because if you aren't an actual contract lawyer, then you won't be able to figure out what ungodly horseshit you have signed up for. And maybe that's the real point here. Informed consent. Or lack thereof. These kinds of incredibly long, impenetrable and convoluted contracts are frankly a form of legal rape. Talking of abuse, Redfall biffed out NVIDIA GeForce experience. That was nice. Seriously, it just kept crashing it for a while, then it saved the video capture to some random folder which I had to hunt down for hours. Then I tried to change settings, and it just froze, so I had to reboot the computer. Marvellous. Who would have thought that a company owned by Microsoft, the people who made Windows, would have the temerity to publish a video game that runs like shit, breaks other software running on your PC, and then crashes the whole lot? Unbelievable. I automatically turned off the music when I started capturing game footage because Bethesda are famous for releasing games with copyrighted soundtracks and then everyone's videos gets copyright claimed and the money goes to someone other than you. Who own bigger houses than you. I'm not yet to be convinced that I'm going to miss anything, but if you are worried, you can buy the Redfall soundtrack on Steam. Mind you don't get crushed in the stampede to buy a copy. Currently. It's got two reviews on Steam, only one of which is bad. So at least that's evidence that there is actually one Redfall related review in existence, which isn't shitting all over this game. When it comes to overall performance, I think it's probably prudent to begin with the working assumption that every single aspect of this game that exists is probably fucked. You could play balked game bingo with Redfall. If you think of any aspect of this game and shouted it out, I could shout bingo. Name anything, I dare you. Graphics, piss poor, capped at 30 FPS on Xbox, and janky and stuttery as all fuck on PC. Performance, this game is so badly optimised, you could use Redfall to stress test water coolers. Fuck. You could use Redfall to stress test the fire resistant capacity of your power supply. Sound? I experienced out of sync enemy NPC shouting long after they were dead. The atmospherics are poor and I don't dare include any music because it might be copyrighted. Story? Think Buffy the Vampire Slayer adapted to be a scratch and sniff book. Cutscenes? Well, they seem to be scrapped in favour of cartoon slides, because budget cuts. They are nice pictures, granted, but if you're going to sting people for 70 fucking quid for a top shelf AAA game, 
opting for the early access graphic novel slides instead of mocap just looks like they were trying to recoup losses before the game was even launched. Because, well, they almost certainly were trying to shave off losses before the game was even launched. Because they all knew damn well this game would flop out on the table half dead like an unfinished alien clone from an alien invasion movie. But more of this later. The enemy AI probably doesn't exist. Seriously, it's AWOL. To be partially patched in later, no doubt. The NPCs have a tiny little rule set that could be scribbled on the back of a napkin, and most of the time they somehow manage to even fuck that up. Frankly, using the term enemy artificial intelligence is taking the piss. The enemy AI in this game could lose a Turing test to a toaster. A Roomba has better AI, and it reacts a damn sight faster most of the time too. Let's just save us all a lot of time here and just roll with the assumption that if something is in Redfall, it's broken, underperforming, malfunctioning, or bodged. Hey, this is Jacob. Naturally, it comes with De Novo. Of course it does, because when you release a shithouse port on PC with crushing levels of graphical pop-in, a download big enough to melt a hard drive and such piss poor optimization that it uses next gen levels of file size and PC usage to produce an end result that is borderline postal 2, then the one thing you really need to add is de novo, just to hammer that last nail into the game's already abysmal performance coffin. De novo, the professional hitman of PC performance. Always putting those extra last three rounds in the head, despite already having put five in the chest. Because if you need to absolutely make sure your game will never run without issues, De Nuvo is your one-stop rootkit wrecking solution. Surely, these guys are taking the piss, right? Adding anti-piracy software to a game that people don't even want to play for free on Xbox Game Pass. They can't give this game away. Who would want to steal it? That's like padlocking dog shit to the pavement as a theft deterrent. Oh, and did I mention, for no logical reason, this is one of those permanently online Bethesda shitfests, so even when playing single player, you need to have a permanent connection with the creaky servers. This means that at some point, Bethesda will no doubt decide it can't be bothered paying for the servers, and when they turn them off, Redfall will stop working forever. And whilst I will concede that this is incredibly unethical from the perspective of consumer rights, I can't help but recognise the potential benefits of this scenario. The lag spikes are horrific. I'm playing this on an Alder Lake i7 with a decent graphics card and this game freezes up like I'm trying to play Battlefield 2042 on launch day on a mobile. I'm not kidding, this game freezes constantly. Is such high load that it heated up my room by 4 degrees because the cooling fan was blowing so much hot air, and the busier the game, the more it micro freezes. Ergo, it happens a lot, precisely during combat. Nobody wants to play a video game that turns their PC into a glorified space heater, runs like shit, freezes up during combat, and makes you play as a sex predator emo. Who thought this was a good idea? I'm trying to be fair here, but saying that Redfall has issues with functionality and fuckery is equivalent to saying that you think your bowl of dog shit tastes funny. The game essentially is an amalgamation of every problem a modern video game could have. Although they did have the decency not to put microtransactions into the game at launch, even though that would have been morally equivalent to trying to sell branded Nazi merchandise to the inmates at Belzen. So congratulations on that one bit of self-restraint. But don't give them any credit for it, because they originally planned to ram this game full of microtransactions. In fact, it was originally designed from the ground up to be a microtransaction delivery device, just like Ubisoft's recent outings. But more of this later. To give you an idea of how fucked and unfinished this game is, the game has this novelty but unfinished little easter egg. 
you can interact with the scenic binoculars overlooking beautiful vistas and even the odd telescope too. Sadly however, they clearly didn't have time to finish the mechanics so you can't actually change the zoom or the direction you're looking in. You can move your mouse around and your compass marker indicates that you're changing direction, but this is not reflected in the actual view through the lens. It's not finished. When it comes to scanning the horizon, they are marginally less functional than a glory hole. In fact, a glory hole would have been vastly more functional than this shit broken mechanic because at least with a glory hole I can peek around a bit and see who's in the next cubicle. With these binocs and telescopes, what is the point of interacting with something that shows you exactly what you are already looking at, but freezes your head in place so you can't look around? I can keep my own fucking head still, thank you very much. Mostly. It's the inclusion of these little unfinished, theoretically good ideas that just highlights the differences between the goals and the unfinished reality of this mess of a game. Before we transition away from specific fuckery into a general meta-analysis of the game-wide and systemic fuckery, we should of course at least discuss the manipulative review practices of Redfall. As has been pointed out by observers such as Jason Scryer, everyone involved in this game knew it was going to be an unmitigated disaster long before release, and I'm talking at least six months to years before release. But more of this later. This was not a matter of conjecture either, Behind the scenes, the entire development of Redfall was an epic organisational shitshow from start to finish, with people actually fleeing the project because they factually knew this game was going to hit the market like an angry Portlandian drug addict throwing their shit at the storefront window. Add to this, it appears that Microsoft deliberately manipulated the review cycle to hide this game's god-awful state. Put simply, these crooked car salesmen knew damn well that this bucket of bolts wouldn't run but they sold it to you knowingly, willingly, and whilst actively hiding this fact from the customer. I'm no lawyer, but I would suspect that this was willful mis-selling and a violation of so many consumer protection laws that it's no wonder they make you sign them all away when you launch the game. Even slightly better than average mainstream journotard, Paul Tassi expressed concern about Bethesda's sketchy review habits and how strange it was that even just prior to the release, the review embargo was still being held in place. Well, here is the precise methodology that Bethesda and Microsoft employed, based on guesswork, some information, a rudimentary drawing I made in MS Paint, and reading lots of other people's comment sections. They knew the game was utter shit, they got a bunch of shills to preview a vertical slice of the game prior to launch, the Liars for Hire said the game was absolutely fucking bonza. This was most likely the result of bribery, but in the interest of fairness, we can't rule out absolute fucking stupidity. They embargoed all actual reviews from early access review copies until launch. They released a game that was so bad that it was automatically declared as worst game of the year. Until Gollum was released, of course. And it was so tragic that Phil Spector had to apologise. Well, the timeline here is seemingly important, and I take no credit for what I'm about to say because I gleaned it from some very sharp comments in the comments section of a Worth a Buy video that was pointed out to me by an associate. Thanks, Archie. But basically, the scam seems to go something like this. You have a shit game that you know is shit and it's guaranteed to get shit reviews at launch. You still want to make lots of money because these private jets to Epstein Island don't pay for themselves, am I right? Microsoft charges your credit card 10 days before launch date. So they kept a lid on all the review feedback about the game. Nine days before launch, after credit cards had been charged for the pre-orders, they pay off a bunch of snivelling shit weasel shill monkeys to go and pre-view the game and say nice things about it because some people in the video game industry will sell out their whole audience, all gamers and probably their eight-year-old daughter's virtue, in exchange for a free plane ticket, a hotel room, some free clicks and a few hundred quid in mouse mats and merch. 
That right there is referred to as modern professional access journalism. So credit cards have been charged for pre-orders, the pre-review shills are hyping the game in the build up to launch, the game releases, people start buying the game on other platforms. It's literally downloading now on a lot of platforms and people are already clicking the end user license agreement that basically says if you pay this shit you have to keep it and people are burning their way through their 2 hour return window on Steam. Just as the review embargo is lifted and the internet lights up like the Baghdad sky during a US airstrike with the message, this game is shit. It certainly appears that Microsoft and Bethesda jumped through hoops and did just about everything in their capacity to pay people to lie about this game in the pre-reviews, hide the fact that it's shit until launch day, get as many people's money in the bank before the truth came out, and then rolled out Phil fucking sphincter to creep out on social media and say, sorry. Now obviously all of what I just said, this video and every video I ever made has the word allegedly hard baked like a watermark into every frame. Figuratively. This is all entirely non-legally binding conjecture and theory crafting and I'm not accusing Bethesda, Arcane or Xbox of any unprofessional or dishonest tactics. I am merely pointing out that based on the preponderance of evidence, some cynical people might reach the conclusion that these guys are a bunch of lying, thieving, manipulative fuckbags. Redfall is not, however, an Epic Game Store exclusive, and this might end up being the only positive thing I will get to say about this entire shitshow. So at least we can say that Phil fucking Sphincter isn't a communist, publicly at least, but all other pejoratives still apply and I might actually have to make up a few new ones too. So what is my overall take on Redfall 76? It is essentially a masterful combination of low effort, uninspired, boring game development, which all synergise perfectly into what can best be described as having a shit time whilst experiencing buyer's remorse. The map has more fake doors than a Chinese hotel fire escape system, the game is less polished than a shit stirring stick from the Iraq war, and the plot is, well, I'm not even sure that there is a plot, other than, you're an idiot, you kill vampires, because reasons. In fact the most significant emotional impact this game will have on you is the feeling of sadness and loss invoked in players who paid full price and now can't get their refunds. What can I really say about Redfall? It's not complicated. You pick one of four shit characters, you get given shit quests, you bimble around trying to do the quests, the enemy NPCs try and stop you, you shoot them because video games, you loot the bodies, you loot boxes, you go back to the base, sell your crap, get more shit quests, and have a little sob about the fact that this generic crap costs you 70 fucking pounds. You progressively improve your level scaled gear, but when I say gear, really it's just guns and cosmetic outfits. Yeah, it's just guns. The gear is your guns. Three slots I think. GG. You can customise the guns, cosmetically. It's abysmal, but at least it's familiar and simple. This is not a particularly sophisticated setup. It's barely a setup at all. You shuffle around, shoot things, check out the weapons they dropped. If they are better than the ones you have, you equip it and sell the old ones. I guess they were just too busy to have actual real comprehensive gear like helmets, body armour and shit like that. And besides, you would have had to pay someone to model the artwork and that would suck because now they shelved all the microtransactions you wouldn't be able to profiteer off the clothing models. That's money better spent on advertising. And shills. I know I've said some fairly negative things about Redfall, and I will do my utmost to continue this trend, but despite all its flaws, at its core Redfall is a very ingenious concept, even if it's not entirely original. Comprehensively fail, 
sell the game anyway. Say sorry. It's the current dominant paradigm of AAA publishing, and 2023 seems to be peak failure. <laughs> you have to admire the audacity of the semi-literal mugging. In fact, that's what this game is really, it's a video game mugging, where after you've been beaten and robbed, the mugger leans over you and says, I just want to say I'm truly sorry about all of this. This isn't the sort of person I am normally. And I want to support the players. And uh, we let a lot of people down this week with the launch of the game, um, but we will, we will continue to strive on. Fuck off. No discussion about Redfall can even begin without first dealing with the leaks. And I'm talking about the leaks coming out of Arcane Austin, not my brain leaking out of my ears whilst playing this game. I would love to speculate about why this game is so terrible. A crack epidemic at Arcane Studios. They tried to get ChatGPT to make the game and it turned out like one of those horrible adverts. Or more likely, this is all some kind of giant hoax. But sadly, it appears that we now know why this game screwed the pooch, screwed the cat, and then lodged its dick firmly in the electrical power outlet. And we know all of this because of Jason Schreier. Mainstream video game journotard, communist, and midget wrangler. Basically, he got all the leaks, and apparently, allegedly, and without assuming any claim this is true, whistleblowers told him all about how Arcane fucked the farm in very gory and precise detail. And it went something like this. Now I will interject by saying I entirely discard his claim that the development was impacted by Zenimax not being able to get enough moderate or progressive developers to move to Austin, Texas to work on the game. This is pure commie lunacy. It's like blaming Trump for a volcano erupting. Seriously, too many Republican game developers didn't cause this game to fail. And frankly, I feel like this is little Jazzy Schreier injecting his own brand of Marxism into what is essentially a logistical, not an ideological situation. But with this duly noted, the other more factual and down-to-earth factors he presents do seem to be part of the problem and can no doubt be verified. The short version is that the lead developers and the managers acted like clueless cretins. I'm talking Ubisoft Malmo levels of arsetard. They lacked clear direction, they lacked a clear vision, they kept changing their minds every five minutes, they also kept doing the whole hipster music journalist trope. Basically, striding in and making statements like, we want it to be Borderlands meets Far Cry, with no actual articulable concept of what they really wanted. Because what they got was Fallout 76 meets Forspoken. Then apparently, there was the general staff attrition. Essentially, nobody wanted to work on this game, so staff retention was a huge problem. Xenomax pays shit wages, so recruitment was a problem. The management had no fucking clue what they wanted, so getting work done was a problem. And this all resulted in... Drumroll please. By the end of the development of Redfall, 70% of the original gangsters that worked on Prey had left Arcane Austin. Seriously. It was like rats fleeing a sinking ship. They did try and compensate this by drafting people in from elsewhere within the company, and also by trying to hire people from other companies. But it was just too big a hole to plug. This constitutes not just a brain drain, but a huge loss in veteran developers, and we've seen how this kind of professional exodus can gut a studio. I learnt that covering The Division 2. But this is not even the worst of it, by far. At its core, the entire project was basically doomed from the start because of greed and avarice. As shocking as that might sound. No really? AAA publishers ruining a video game because of greed and avarice? Surely not. But you know those Red 476 jokes I keep making? Well, they ain't jokes. It turns out that the entire Redfall project was built from the ground up to be essentially Arcane Studios does Fallout 76 always online recurring revenue model. Yes, in fucking DD. 
Redfall was originally designed to be a permanently online, multiplayer, microtransaction, pay to win store based on the recurring payment models of Fallout 76. It appears that they looked at games like Fortnite and Destiny and thought, how hard can it be? Hold my beer. Why don't we get Arcane Studios, who incidentally specialise in single player games, and get them to make an online multiplayer game, and it will be the next big banger, like Destiny or Overwatch 1. I mean, that strategy worked out so well when Bethesda followed the same plan with Fallout 76. Am I right? Any creative and commercial project that's predicated on the mission statement along the lines of, based on Fallout 76, is logically doomed to failure. So basically Redfall 76 is what happens when you create a video game around the concept of a shop, set out to make a hash up of single player and multiplayer, keep changing the plans every few months, combine elements of single player, multiplayer and co-op into the same damn game, all your experienced staff leave, you won't pay enough money to replace them, the management are clueless, the publisher is only interested in microtransactions, and very late in development you realise, fuck this, this is going to be an unmitigated disaster, let's slash the funding, make it a co-op game, shut down the shop, pay some people to lie about how good it is, embargo the reviews and sell it anyway. Then nice, sphincter fella can flop out on social media and say, I done an oopsie. Jason Trier's coverage of the leaks certainly seems to be authoritative, checkable, and aligning with what we see in the end product, so credit to him for this. Although I don't buy into his Redfall hypothesis that the Proud Boys broke his video game. Redfall is as woke as an Oregon school board meeting, so I don't think they were experiencing any shortage of progressive politics in the brainstorming sessions. If the limited edition came with a free butt plug and a letter about reparations, I would not have been surprised. Trigger warning. I'm about to say words. They will trigger some people. That's quite funny. Let's crack on. Now normally I like to be the most reasonable and level headed person in the room even if that level head has a tinfoil hat on it. But I'm going to float a rather unpopular and possibly controversial theory. Two in fact and they may trigger Arcane Studios fanboys. Or girls, I'm not sexist. 1. Arcane Studios are massively overrated. 2. They might be a creatively bankrupt one-trick pony. Now there are rumours circulating on the internet that I can sometimes be a mite overcritical, nay, cynical even. But sometimes when I suspect that a studio is surrounded by hype and devotion that primarily trace back to one or two previous games, it's worth checking the receipts to see what's really going on back in the stockroom. So exactly what has Arcane done? 2002 Arx Fatalis, apparently a decent action RPG. 2006 Dark Messiah of Might and Magic, apparently a decent action RPG with a slightly lol name. 2009, Karma Star, a mobile game for your fucking iPad, played by nonces, probably. But here is where things get a bit sketchy, or should I say sketchier. Then in 2012, back in the days when Gangman Style was in the charts, they made Dishonored, a brilliant game that everyone loved. 2016, Dishonored 2, a woke remake of the last game, and it wasn't much loved. 2017 Prey, which some people described as, here it comes, Dishonored in Space. But it was a critically acclaimed game. 2019 Wolfenstein Youngblood, the most hated Wolfenstein game of all time, one of the most hated Bethesda games of all time, two of the most hated video game protagonists of all time. 2019, Wolfenstein Cyberpilot, a really, really shit VR game. 2021, Deathloop, another bloody rehash of former glories. Essentially, an inferior black exploitation remake of the Mooncrash DLC from Prey. 2023, 
Redfall. What can only be described as an ultra-low budget, ultra-low effort, unfinished rehash of Wolfenstein Youngblood relocated in a very small shitty town full of vampires and lag freezes. Now I'm not a hater. I liked Dishonored and Prey. But when people casually throw around statements like, Arcane are a great studio. Well, that is not strictly reflected in the receipts. They have had some superb games over the last 20 years, but the last decade is most generously described as <coughs> iterative, but could equally be described in a less bullshitterized manner as rehashing Dishonored 1 six ways to Sunday to try and get the next big commercial hit. Too harsh? Dishonored, sequel, rehash, disaster, disaster, rehash, rehashed, and a disaster. If I was an outside auditor, I would come to the conclusion that 1. Arcane have run out of original ideas, and 2. They are currently overrated as a studio. But I would also add that ultimately, this all boils down to the overarching issue. Their management at some point has started to fail, and probably their parent company, Top Down Management, is terrible too. Terrible, disorganised and greedy. Now I'm absolutely not saying they are a bad studio, but if you really squint at the small print and check the details, it's not a hard sell to claim that these days they seem to be creatively and intellectually bankrupt as a developer. Running out of good creative new ideas does not mean you can't have more in the future, and I'm sure they still have one or two good people left, and they have hired three or four new people to fill the void left by the giant vacuum left by 70% of the Prey developers fleeing the scene. But all their major victories seem to be in the past, and it makes me wonder whether that the more the company succeeded, and the more it got enmeshed into the hardcore world of AAA development, the more that the developers have been forced to spend 100% of their time running on hamster wheels to get stuff done to deadline, and as a result, there isn't any room or time left to actually come up with new creative concepts and ideas. I would also suggest that maybe they don't have the management support to prosecute those kinds of ideas even if they did come up with them. And certainly the people who seem to be creatively in charge of these projects don't have any creative new ideas. This is all speculation, but it certainly appears to me that Arcane Studio is having the creativity crushed out of it as an organisation. Phil fucking Sphincter's apology is worth noting. He is sorry. He has let the fans down. He has let the Xbox community down. He's let himself down. He has not changed the refund policy. So he's also absolutely 100% full of shit. As far as I'm aware, there have been no changes to the refund policy, so despite all of the sawies and all the wistful hand-wringing from Phil the Shill Spencer, despite what he says, what he means is, I'm sorry about the bad publicity, but hell, look at all your free money you gave me. I'm gonna keep that. But all of this ties into another nexus of failure that sends toxic tendrils out into every corner of this game, because the game was originally designed to be a pay-to-win, pay-as-you-go online shopping emporium. The entire game is structured around this. I believe in 2021-ish they decided to pull the in-game shop and all of that fuckery because there was a huge shitstorm brewing about live service games in the news, and some corpo rightly shit the bed and realised that if this game was shit, and a shop, it would be double the disaster for twice the price. So they shit canned the in-game tourist shops, but kept the plans to offer paid operators after release. Yes, you heard that right. There are unredacted interviews where they claimed they would release pay-to-play new operators for Redfall. <coughs> then the penny dropped. This is why both the operators and their talent trees are so rubbish. It's because we were supposed to pay for the decent ones. The ones that they were going to sell to us after launch. See what they did here? You get to choose between one of four shitty, unlikable characters. 
Your abilities are defined by the character you are playing. Your bare bones perk tree is really just there to primarily buff and personalise that specific character. Like if you were playing as the rapey Ezra Miller character, you get skill specific talents to invest in, to do with your raven, on top of the mind blowingly imaginative generic talents like carry more ammo. This is why the characters and the perk slash talent system is so shit. It's supposed to be, because it's a placeholder. It's just there as a benchmark until the new characters they plan to sell you arrive later, and they will be better, with better abilities, and a better bespoke talent tree. Although I would not be shocked if they totally pull the plug on this game, if they haven't decided to already. And this is the problem with live service games and other highly monetized games. When the game mechanics are structured around a commercial progression path, the game's design is already compromised. To employ a mechanical engineering analogy to illuminate the structural incompatibilities and competing design requirements involved when two opposing design philosophies are in direct conflict for the same organisational resources, you can't make a hearse out of a fucking ice cream van. Unless, of course, you want to take someone to their grave listening to a jingly jangly version of Green Sleeves with a trail of fucking kids running behind the van. Now, personally, I want my funeral to be like that. I want the kids to be tricked into attending, given a free ice cream, and then sternly told about the fleeting and impermanent nature of human existence in this dimension. I think it would be wonderful. Although some of them might start crying. But metaphysical issues aside, I still would have arrived in an ice cream van and not a hearse, even if you had painted it black. Redfall is an ice cream van at its core, a live service ice cream van trying to sell you shit melted ice cream. Pulling the store cannot hide that, because the game is structured around it. This game was designed to send you out on repeating, grindy activities in order to motivate you to buy better stuff, so you could do it faster, whilst putting prettier gonks on your guns to impress your friends. Well, impress your easily impressed friends at least. The enemy AI is an absolute disgrace. The irony of Redfall is that it's supposed to be a vampire game, but the NPC AI is so cripplingly bad that you could rightly claim they act like zombies. Before I learned about the development woes of Arkane Austin, like any normal person, I naturally assumed that Arkane Austin Studios was experiencing some kind of fentanyl epidemic or staff drug problem. It's Austin after all, despite being Texas, Austin is still a festering enclave of neo-Marxists and communist politicians who all support the usual pillars of degeneracy and the disintegration of capitalist society. But what perplexed me was how they had manifested the behaviour of drug-addled brainless automatons into the video game NPCs themselves. Because from judging from how the enemy NPCs behave, maybe they are completely skull-capped on fentanyl too. Most of the time they just stand around behave mildly disturbed when someone jolts them out of their dazed state and then react randomly. Imagine launching a military assault on a homeless encampment in California. After a while, you would actually start to hope that one of the drug-addled crazies would stop shooting at his fellow homeless brethren and shoot at you instead, just for the change of pace. Okay, maybe that's just me, but you get my point. I appreciate that programming enemy AI requires some finesse, effort, and I would assume a budget, but here it is basically absent. Doing it well is hard, granted, but not doing it at all requires effort. We are living in an age of real artificial intelligence, shit like ChatGPT and other woke AI programs. You know, the ones that will write you poems about how Joe Biden is wonderful, but refuses to do the same for Trump because that would be politically biased. My point is, we now have AI programs that you can download to your PC which can write your biology essays in seconds, and I'm talking literally seconds, sometimes almost instantaneously. We are experiencing an era where we have the technology which theoretically could program NPCs AI so that it not only reacted authentically, but it could execute complex and variable behaviour patterns, act in its own self-interest, 
evade enemy fire, attack the player, and do all of this whilst reciting a fucking PhD thesis about artificial intelligence in video games and finishing your kid sister's geology essay. So frankly, there is no excuse in the modern age for having enemy AI which literally is incapable of just reliably turning around, facing you, and shooting its gun. This enemy AI is so appallingly bad, read, sometimes absent, that if you programmed in one line of code which gave each one of them a 10% chance to pull a T-pose when they spot an enemy, the AI would literally be more dynamic. There's no excuse for this piss poor omission. Seriously, a first person shooter where they didn't actually implement proper enemy AI or basic rule sets. My god, the whole drug problem hypothesis is becoming more plausible by the minute. The best you will get is vampires, when triggered, will home in on your location like heat seeking missiles. Human NPCs tend to just bimble around, and if they are triggered, they will do pretty much the same. Mostly. Sometimes not. It's really bad. Maybe someone at Arcane thought this was authentic combat. Groups of vacant dullards standing around cars, smelling their own farts and repeating the same three catchphrases like they're reading them off of a cue card. But I doubt it. The one positive thing to come out of this is the utility of Xbox Game Pass. At least people get a chance to try out these shithouse fail projects without spunking top dollar. But this fact alone causes me some unease. Like, maybe this is all part of some plan, along the lines of making the strategy of pumping out unfinished crap more acceptable because they can hide behind a defence of, well, you could have played it for free on Game Pass. I can't put my finger on it, but I'm starting to feel a distinct air of unease about the whole Game Pass slash mass acquisition drive by Xbox and Microsoft. As I said before, Enjoy this while the sun shines, because I have no doubt that at some point when Microsoft has attained sufficient market monopoly, they will go full evil core, rug pull a lot of us, and reveal their true evil master plan. And make no mistake, if Starfield launches as a buggy unfinished mess, Xbox won't waste a second to tell us all, well you could have played it for free on Game Pass. Oh, and FYI. Starfield has already been locked to 30 FPS on console, so good luck with that. I guess I should, out of a misplaced sense of fairness, at least mention the plight of the average developer working at Arcane Studios Austin. I've ragged on the developers like they are all equally to blame, but I do appreciate that this is primarily a failure of management. I'm sure Arcane Studios is just like any other development studio, engineering factory or concentration camp. Most of the critical decisions are made by the higher-ups in management, and this top-down trickle of failure permeates groundwards through the company like a cascading fountain of piss, whilst the average employee, the bulk of the employees, are just doing the hard work, not getting enough credit, not having any say over the big decisions for which they are all going to be collectively blamed, whilst the piss drips relentlessly onto all of their heads. I get it. I'm sure the average dev working on Redfall worked hard to make the best game they could, and the decision to pump out this half-baked crap was not their fault. It's still a dreadful game though, and you might at least want to question yourself and your managers about the wisdom, implications and ethics of ripping off the video game community en masse with a product you know is broken, which was mismarketed and abused the press embargo to rob people of their chance to cancel their pre-orders by lifting said embargo at the moment of release. So credit to the developers who walked off this project, whether it be a silent protest, distancing yourself from the impending calamity, or just career self-preservation. Respect to the developers who took one look at where this was all heading, lifted their chins high, and said, fuck this for a game of soldiers, I'm off. They say that in video game development you're only as good as your last game. Well, anyone or any company that has Redfall on their CV, well their reputation is now shit. On a positive note though, at least for once, the mainstream video game activist pseudo-journalists actually did some real work and mostly dunked on Redfall right out of the gate. 
The really sad part of all of this is that there are at least the seeds of a few good concepts here. Possibly. It kind of reminded me a bit of Dying Light with the whole scooting around town, capping missions, climbing on buildings, setting up little bases of operation, helping the locals and using UV light as a weapon against hostiles. Yeah, that would be it. It's basically a low budget Dying Light 2 knockoff with all the fun sucked out through its nose. So we can't even rule out that the good elements of this game aren't just ripped off from other games. So scrub that semi-compliment, it was an accident. At one point I thought I would still like to see what this game could have become, given a better budget and maybe two more years development. Although as soon as I said that, I realised that what I really mean is, I'm not actually bothered about seeing what this game could have been under the right circumstances. She could have been a supermodel under the right circumstances. He could have been an upstanding member of the community under the right circumstances. I just don't care about what this game could have been. And if you do care, I strongly suggest you just go and play some Dying Light 2. It will spare you a lot of misery, frustration, quite a lot of money and a significant amount of electricity cooling your PC down to a temperature where it won't be blowing superheated plasma out of the back of your desk. It's hard enough to negotiate this timeline. Let's not worry about what Redfall might have been in another. Ultimately, the main issue with this game is that it's bodged together unfinished crap. It's not even a minimal viable product. It's a non-viable product and it doesn't do itself any favours either. The main enemy, the vampires, teleport. That's not a great concept to add to a game with constant micro freezes, lag and lockups. Think about that, highly mobile teleporting bad guys. And the shooting is less responsive than an out of date mobile phone full of spyware. It's like playing a first person shooter where someone has removed your graphics card, set it up in Greenland and you're accessing it via a dial up modem. Essentially, this means that shotguns are pretty much mandatory. In fact, if I could have stored more ammo, I would probably have just been fine just using a shotgun because the shotgun fallacy of the blunderbuss pellet spread counters the highly evasive vampires and the horrific lag spikes. I always like to say at least one positive thing about any game, so I will say this. At least it's more fun to play than The Division 2 these days. Although I would qualify that this only applies if you play for less than three or four hours. Sure, it's boring, loot touring, fuck around in a pointless open world, just like The Division 2. And at least this has vampires. They say a change is as good as a rest. Am I right? Well, I guess I should wrap this up by just saying when people have an emotional attachment to a game developer, I always think of the Theseus paradox. Basically, it goes something like this. Imagine you have a wooden ship and every year you take it to the docks to do repairs. After a century or so, every single part of that ship has been replaced with a new part. Not one single plank of wood or yard of rope is from the original ship. So this poses a philosophical question. Is it still the same ship? Now we can argue all day about the philosophical implications for Theseus's ship, but when it comes to video game developers, the answer is a resounding no. As is seen clearly with Arcane, the answer is no because there is virtually no continuity in staff, management or ownership. Most of the OG staff have gone. This company has changed hands several times and is now entirely owned under the umbrella of Xbox Games and Microsoft. There's no continuity of ethos, creed or command structure. When video games take literally three to five years to make, a developer can substantially transform over the production cycle of a single game. So I think it's safe to say that Arcane Studios today is not the same company that it was 10 years ago when they made Dishonored. Let alone the same company it was 20 years ago when it was a little company based in Leon that cranked out excellent RPGs. Do not develop emotional attachments to corporations because they are not people. And frequently the actual people that act as a public face of the company are either lying corpos 
or in a position where someone else tells them what to say. Even if a company is wholly owned by one person who is completely in charge, they might just be waiting for their moment to cash out at your expense. Don't get me wrong, I love Dinger too. But for all we know, he's just a corporate sock puppet, or waiting to cash out his shares and set up a little indie studio of his own. Redfall is all the justification anyone needs that it's time for regulatory bodies to enforce their own bloody consumer regulations on video game publishers. These products are regulated apparently, but most countries don't have the political will to enforce the damn rules. With Redfall, they pulled a typical Fallout 76 Bethesda shitshow. They misrepresented the product, they sharted out a broken unfinished game, they made you sign away your rights just to launch the damn thing, then when it turned out it was balked, they just apologised, did not issue mandatory refunds and just walked away. It doesn't sink any lower than this. This is Ubisoft Malmo levels of dishonesty, failure and taking the piss. Redfall really has established a new genre of video games. We have early access, although that's frequently nothing more than covert corpo games as a service hidden behind shell companies. Well, Redfall ushers in a new era of video game entertainment. Failure as a service. You don't finish making a video game. You copy and paste the console codes into Windows. You pretend this is some sort of porting, then flop out the rancid mess on the table, and as soon as the bowl of shit lands in front of the diners, they roll out the even more rancid head waiter who shouts, Sorry, across the dining hall. I am genuinely worried that failure as a service has become a legitimate tactic of AAA publishers. Cobble together a pile of failed crap, hype it up, sell it, say sorry, rinse and repeat. Redfall is a low budget sub early access effort served up in a box that says AAA game and sold at £70. Actually fuck that. Redfall is like when people buy Playstations from Amazon and all they get is a box with a brick inside. Redfall stops one short from literally having someone from Microsoft come around your house in the night and steal your wallet. This pile of abusive crap was knowingly sold to customers at more than normal price, despite not being a fully functional game, and at this point AAA publishers have not only crossed the Rubicon, they have set up camp in the city. If Microsoft sent you a brick in a box instead of an Xbox, you would have rights to a refund, but apparently Microsoft is now prepared to shit in a box instead of giving you the video game they promised and abscond from all consumer rights to refund you. Redfall is so bad that people who played it for free on Xbox Game Pass, even they, are jokingly asking for refunds for a game they didn't pay for. Redfall is the room of video games. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. It is a perfectly refined combination of everything bad about modern video games, all crammed into one unholy shit show. In fact, the only remarkable thing about this game is that it shows that it is theoretically possible that Ubisoft might get knocked off the top spot as worst publisher on the planet if Ubisoft doesn't go bust by next year, obviously. In the game's defence though, it does have one virtue. It's a true test of friendship. Because if you can actually find a group of friends who are prepared to play this game with you, then clearly you are a person who can foster strong friendships and have found people in your life that you can rely on to make sacrifices for you. But for now, Good luck and happy hunting.